Recording has stopped. All right, so this will be a deep dive on Ansible integration with Triple O, and the, the feature name that we've kind of been using for that is config download. So uh, if you hear people talk about config download, they're mainly talking about um, applying all the software configuration with Ansible um, instead of having that driven with the heat agent. So those terms are kind of used interchangeably when we talk about config download. Um, that's that's what we're talking about. Um, I did want to quickly share some some links, um, and the first of them is our documentation. So we have I'll put this into the chat. I don't know if everyone's seen it or not. Yeah, so we have some official docs on how you can deploy this way with Ansible and how to use config download. Uh, it's pretty extensive, uh, so we tried to go into a lot of detail here. And so what I'm going to try to do during this deep dive is basically uh, more or less walk through what this documentation tells you. I mean, I'm not going to step through it kind of word for word, but I'm going to try to cover all of the the same material that's in the docs here. Um, so hopefully uh, you'll be able to refer back to this uh, to kind of match up with, with what I'm showing here um, in the deep dive. Um, so just real quickly, um, if you take a look at the kind of the uh, triple O Ansible sequence diagram that's kind of at the top of that documentation, um, you can kind of get an idea of how this process works and how it differs from our current deployment architecture. So the way things work today is we'll create a stack in Heat. Heat makes a bunch of deployment and configuration data available via its API. And then on our overcloud nodes, an agent starts up and starts pulling the Heat API for that data. And it will start applying things like puppet manifests, uh, or bash scripts, or even local Ansible actions. So how that's different with config download is heat, act, heat will actually run the whole stack to create complete without actually applying any of that. Uh, and then we, from the undercloud, we use the heat API to pull all that data out from heat, and then we apply that with Ansible playbook. Um, so the, un the undercloud is really our kind of Ansible runner or the Ansible control node. And that's pushing all of the deployment data out to all the overcloud nodes. So that's more of a traditional way that, that people use Ansible, where you have a central control node that, that's orchestrating the changes across a bunch of nodes that you have defined in your inventory. All right. Um, so I am going to start showing here in my terminal. So yeah, this should be screen shared and you can also join the teammate session if you want. And the links to that are in the Blue Jeans chat. Yeah, and just feel free to interrupt with questions at, at any time. Otherwise, I'm just going to try to, to, to blow through it relatively quickly. Um, but feel free to, to interrupt. So I've actually already got a stack deployed out here because we all know there's no way we could deploy a stack uh, this quickly during a demo or a deep dive. Um, so I've already got an environment deployed and that's what I'm gonna be using to, to show you all how this works. Um, so it is three controllers. Get this to return. Yeah, it's a it's an HA environment. It's containers, of course, uh, three controllers, one compute. Um, so I just want to show my deployment command for that and quickly point out the the special parts that actually enable config download, and then we'll take a look at those in more detail. 
so this is my deployment command. I actually copied this from CI. So these are all the same environments that we use in our OBB HA job. Um, and the ones for enabling config download is this one right here. Um, it's called config download environment. So you have to pass a special environment. Um, and then you also have to pass a standalone CLI arg, just dash dash config download. And the dash dash config download, that actually enables an additional Mistral workflow at the end of the deployment. So there's a special workflow we use that actually runs Ansible after the heat stack create is completed. Um, and so in order to enable that, you have to pass dash dash config download. Um, and this last option is actually optional. You can walk through those steps manually if you want. And I know a lot of people do that now for development. Um, and that's actually pretty useful. And, and I'll show that at the end as well. But if you just want to get an overcloud deployed with a single command uh, and have it be functionally equivalent to what we have today, then uh, just pass it dash dash config download. And for the upcoming Rocky release, we plan to make this the default, so you wouldn't have to pass config download. We'll probably have a reverse option, uh, like dash dash no config download. So right now it's not the default, but, but we plan to make it that in the upcoming release. So I just want to show what the config download environment looks like and what it does. Um, so it's just a resource registry mapping some resources. And we map Triple O software deployment and Triple O structure deployment, as well as the heat variants as well. Um, we map those to a couple of nested stacks called config download software and config download structured, and I'll show that in a second. And we know op all the deployment steps. And then there's a, some special handling in here right now for no, no opping some of the uh, additional deployments as well, which don't map to any of the previous types. Um, so that's, that's actually cleaned up with a patch in progress, but that's being special handled right now, um, these SSH deployments. Um, So yeah, let me show this nested stack for the config download. Yeah, I was just looking at the chat message. Um, can I make the terminal a bit bigger? I really can't, or we won't be able to see anything. Um, if you're looking at the blue jeans screen share, you might not be able to see it that well, but there are some links to teammate that you can use. You can either connect to that with SSH or look in the web. And I think if you look on the web, it's it's readable at least. Yeah. Cool. Um, so let's take a look at. So there, there's a question about why did we map? Let's see. Let me pull that back up. So you're asking software structured. The reason that's like that, that this first triple O one is mapped to structured, it's just the way that the existing mappings work. Um, OS triple O software deployment, uh, I believe it was mapped to OS each structured by default. So I have to map it to this, the nested stack that uses a structured deployment. Um, I can double check that, but I, I don't think there's, um, there's not really any significant meaning behind that. I'm just trying to preserve what types of these deployments we already have. But if we take a look at what those nested stacks look like um, and what these actually do. So this has the same parameter interface as a heat software deployment or a heat structure deployment. Uh, that's what makes this pluggable so that we can map these resources to this nested stack. Uh, so you'll see the parameters here are the same as you would pass into one of those resource types. Um, 
you know, things like actions and, you know, the server that you want to apply to, what the actual config is, things like that. Um, then we create a couple of resources down here. Um, one of them is called triple O deployment. And this is just of OS heat value. And all we're doing is just saving the input values as values on this resource. And this is so that once the stack is completed, we can come back and we can query for all these resources called triple O deployment and get all of the data uh, that we need to basically generate the Ansible playbooks and tasks files and things like that. Um, we also, so one of the things I, I do down here as well is I do actually end up creating a heat structure deployment resource, but it's associated with kind of a, a dummy server down here called triple O server. Uh, and the reason we do this is because heat has a bunch of kind of handling of the input values. Um, so we'll do things like resolve and intrinsic functions and things like that. And we want heat to go ahead and do that for us. And the only way to do that right now is to just go ahead and uh, associate those input values with a structured deployment. Um, and then I associate that with a dummy server. And then up here, I go ahead and make that deployment available um, as part of this value so that later on I can read out those resolved input values. Um, this is a little complex, but um, need, needless to say, uh, the, the point of this template is that um, it's basically just saving all of the input values that, that our existing templates are passing to the various deployment resources. Uh, so and not actually associating them with um, a server. Uh, that way we can read them out with the API afterwards. Um, so that's how the stacks work. And the, the software nested stack is the same as well. Um, just the deployment it uses is, is just a type software deployment. So that's really the only difference between, between those two stacks. Um, all right, so like I said, the, the, and then the other part of the deployment command is the dash dash config download, and that actually enables uh, the custom workflow to kind of pull all this stuff out of the heat API and apply it with Ansible playbook. So if we take a look at that. The name of that workflow is called config download deploy. So what happens when you do a deployment with config download is first we do the regular workflow, which is just called like this one up here at the top, which is a deploy plan. Um, so we go ahead and do that. And this will actually finish much faster because it's not applying any of the, the actual software configuration. So it's not doing the five steps and the post-deployment steps and, and all that jazz. Um, all, all it's doing is just creating the actual OpenStack resources in your, your undercloud. So if you are using Nova and Ironic to provision the machines, it would go through that process. And once that step was done, uh, your stack would, would go to create complete pretty quickly. Um, I, most of my development is actually with deployed server where I'm using pre-provisioned nodes. And so I don't even have to wait for Nova and Ironic to do the deployment. So when you, if you're doing that, your, your stack creation times are usually less than 10 minutes, uh, which is pretty nice because that's a really good way to iterate on the templates. Um, find out if you have a problem in, in your templates in terms of like a syntax error or something. Um, you can actually find that out pretty quick. Um, and just as a side note, that's the same architecture and kind of workflow that the undercloud container uh, installer uses. Uh, since your undercloud itself is a pre-provisioned node, um, it just runs through a, a heat stack create with config download 
and then pulls the Ansible playbooks out of that. Um, so you can almost think think of heat as almost being ephemeral in this case. Um, we're really, if, if you're using deployed server, it's it's really just a big YAML hammer that's just cr crunching about a, a bunch of YAML and figuring out what needs to be applied to which server, but it's not actually doing any of, any of that uh, applied software configuration. Uh, it's just making it available for to Ansible later on. Um, so if we jump back to config download, the config download deploy workflow. Oh, let's see, there's a question in the chat. Yeah, cool. All right, um, just real quickly, jump through the, the tasks here so that you can kind of get an idea of what actually happens when this gets kicked off. So there's a task called get config. This is a custom action called get over cloud config. This is the task that's going to query the heat API. It's going to look at a bunch of stack outputs um, to get all of the Ansible playbook data out of the stack. It's going to search for all of those triple O deployment resources that I showed you earlier. And it's going to create a bunch of tasks associated with those and basically generate all of the Ansible playbooks um, that you need to apply um, the deployment. A download config. Yeah, that's part of that too. I think it's two separate actions, but it's both are just preparing the Ansible. Um, we have a task down here called get private key, and this is pulling the SSH key out of the Mistral environment that we use to connect to the nodes. So we have a, a key that's stored in Mistral, and we, we use that to connect to the nodes. We don't want to use a a uh, private key that might be in like the user's home directory or something because then we're we're kind of handling security credentials which could be used for various systems so we we create our own private key and we're reading that back out now with that task uh, we have a task here to generate the ansible inventory and then uh, let's see So here we just set this send message run Ansible. We're just sending a message out that says we're, we're starting to, to run the Ansible playbook. Then we get down to this action, run Ansible. And that's our generic kind of triple O.ansible playbook action, which takes this input kind of everything that you might pass to Ansible playbook on the command line. You can typically pass into this custom action. So this stuff should be familiar if you're familiar with the Ansible playbook command. So pass in an inventory, um, a playbook, a remote user, any extra SSH args, um, verbosity, uh, things like that. Um, yeah, we also pass it in. This will be significant later. Um, this work directory. Uh, so one of the things we do is we create a, a working directory under varlib mistral, and that's where we download all the Ansible playbooks to and the SSH key and generate the inventory. That way you can uh, interact with all that stuff after the fact. We can also collect it in our CI jobs and it's useful for debugging and things like that. Um, then we have a couple of messages down here. So if things passed or things failed, um, I notify the user of that. And that's pretty much it. Um, so, you know, the steps are download all the Ansible data from Heat, generate the inventory, uh, and then run Ansible. Um, so it's relatively straightforward. Um, so I want to just show when you run that whole command, I saved the log here. So I want to show what that looks like. So um, you see a bunch of See a bunch of output here, which is uh, normal for our stack. And we start creating our stack. And we'll take a look at how long this one actually took. But if we start creating it at 2209, actually wasn't using deployed server here. So it did have to deploy the nodes. Um, but anyway, it was done at 2212, the actual stack. So even with deploying those four nodes, this is actually a vert host. It's, it's a virtual environment. I'm not using true bare metal, but um, 
even with having to deploy those nodes, the whole heat stack create took like 13 minutes. Um, so we haven't applied any of the software configuration yet, but uh, this still gives you like a really good idea of um, how we can continue to kind of make the heat part faster. Um, and, you know, kind of just use that as, you know, feeding the data that we need to actually apply the configuration. Um, once that kind of stack is create, kind of the next thing we do is we uh, inject that generated private key that I mentioned earlier. Um, and that's, that's what's happening here. Um, you can ignore the, war the warnings about the post public key changing. That's because I had deployed a couple times in this environment. Um, but we go ahead and inject that private key into the nodes so that we'll have it to use later. And we kick off the next workflow right here. You can see we're kicking off the workflow config download deploy, which is the one that I just showed you. Um, so we're starting that. So that will automatically start up. Um, it will tell you, so here's that working directory I mentioned, var lib mistral slash UUID. That UUID corresponds to the mistral execution ID. Uh, it generated the inventory under that directory. And then here's that message running Ansible playbook. Um, and at the same time that you're getting all this output on the CLI, uh, we also are saving this log file under the var lib mistral working directory. Okay. So, on, on the CLI that we want to continue giving you that that streaming output so that you know you have some indication that something's going on. So, you know, this is what the data looks like at this point. Um, looks mostly like Ansible data. Um, unfortunately, you don't get the nice colorized output when we do this because the messages are coming back over as a car queue. So you don't get that pretty color output from Ansible playbook that you might be used to, but um, it's just still pretty useful. Um, so yeah, this gets really busy. Um, it's jumping through this stuff. But if we go to go down to the end, um, you know, you'll get the play recap summary. Um, and so you can see here are my four nodes. Um, one of the things that would be nice for us to improve here is to <clears throat> use the node host names if we have them in the inventory. So that this actually said, uh, you know, controller dash zero, controller dash one, two, et cetera. Anyway, you can see the, the stuff that, that got applied. Uh, and then here are the, the me messages at the end. Um, so, and then your typical output at the very end when we generate the overcloud RC file. What I wanna show you now is the, what actually gets generated under Mistral. Uh, yeah, so if you, um, let's see, I'll just become root, but if you add your stack user to the Mistral group, you'd be able to, to browse this directory. Um, it needs to be secure from all users because we download the, pri the private SS SSHP in here. Um, but if you explicitly add your, your stack user to the Mistral group, then, then you'll be able to see it. Um, so if I jump into that working directory, you can kind of see all the stuff that got, download, got downloaded and created when we did that work, workflow. Um, and kind of the mo most useful thing that, that I typically interact with is this ansible playbook command dot sh and this is an exact reproduction of the ansible playbook command that got run by the workflow and so you can actually just run this if you want to reapply all of the ansible stuff or if you wanted to, to test out making a change you could make that locally here in a playbook or task and then re rerun the command here. Um, so this is pretty useful um, in terms of development. Um, 
and making changes and, and things of that nature, testing out new features, things like that. Um, but I'm just going to kill that for now. I guess I want to show some of the other files in here. Uh, we have an Ansible config file, um, which is just setting a few small things. One of them is the log file I mentioned earlier. So you'll have the log file here, which I actually just blew away, I think, when I started running it again. Or let's see, did it save both? Yeah, actually, it just appends to the log. That's good. Um, so you got that. Um, let's see. Oh, I guess I can show the main playbook that might kind of make some sense if you're familiar with how we do the stepwise deployment with heat with the five steps. Uh, if you were to open this up, you would would see the corresponding five steps in here. And we also have some other interfaces in here which are pluggable. So we have something called like external deployment steps that allows you to basically interact with um, other tasks that you want executed from the undercloud. Uh, so you can actually have heat templates that define external deployment steps. Uh, that's how we're going to add support for things like Ceph Ansible and uh, other Ansible driven installers. You can you can use external deployment steps for that. Um, and then we kind of get into the the over cloud deployment steps. Um, and you can see these tasks are just repeated for step two, step three, etc., all the way down through step five. Uh, and then we have a task for our, our post deployments at the end. Um, so yeah, if you were to kind of explore under here, other stuff is in the group VARs. Um, so if we open up for controller zero, um, you, you, you can actually see the representation of the heat software deployments themselves. And this is what we're pulling out with config download when we query the heat API. So you can actually see the full network deployment script here that's going to get run um, upgrade init so you know all, all the deployments that you're kind of used to seeing when you deploy a stack um, you're going to see those in here and you, and you can actually you can actually see um, you know exactly what's going to get run and if you if you wanted to come in here and make a change uh, you could if you wanted to to test it out um, you know, one of the things that, that we can do is use tags and things like that to just apply certain deployments again. So everything's been tagged in here, so you can kind of see we have the deploy steps tagged. We have everything that applies to the overcloud is tagged as overcloud. Um, Deploy steps are all tagged with pre-deploy here. Um, so you can kind of explore this stuff and, and get a sense of, of how to apply just a specific deployment. So if you just wanted to rerun the network deployment step, you, you could do that. Um, things like that. If you just wanted to run Puppet Step 1 again, you can do that. So you know, part of the goal of making this Ansible driven is to expose a lot of the things that people like about Ansible, um, you know, kind of expose those to the operator. So being able to rerun certain tasks uh, and see what changes, having a check mode, you know, applying things to only certain hosts, um, you're able to do that with all of this. Um, so that, that's kind of cool. So let's see, the other thing I wanted to show back to the stack user. So the other thing that you can do is if you want to skip the whole workflow step uh, and kind of do all this manually, I wanted to briefly show what that looks like. 
So this would be if you did not pass the dash dash config download. Um, you still have to pass, let me just bring up the deployment command again. So you still have to pass the environment if you want this to work, the config download environment, um, but you don't have to pass the dash dash config download. And what would happen if you did that is you would get your stack created complete and you would just have a bunch of deployed bare metal nodes with no software configuration or anything deployed on them. They wouldn't have any containers running or no services would be configured or anything like that. Um, so, that's the, so this is kind of a good way if you kind of want to break up the steps to be more modular, if you only want to work on specific pieces. Um, so if you were doing that and then you wanted to kind of a, apply the Ansible parts manually, um, you can do that. One of the things you need to do first is generate your inventory file. So we have a command to do that, triple O Ansible inventory. This has actually been around for a while, so this might be something that you're already familiar with. Um, deploy this. You can either use this as a dynamic inventory or you can create a static inventory. Um, just dump that to inventory it can kind of give, give you a sense of what that's going to look like. So you open up the inventory file. Yeah, so you just have an Ansible inventory in here. Um, got some facts set on some of the hosts. Um, but yeah, that's, that's kind of what that looks like. Um, nothing too, too surprising in there. And then if you want to download the actual Ansible playbooks and data, we have a command to do that, triple O config download. type up there but it doesn't matter um, so you can put that into a directory this does not take that long usually less well less than a minute So if we go in there, you have a similar set of files that you had from the workflow, but the things you're missing here are the generated inventory, the Ansible configuration file, uh, the Ansible playbook command, all that stuff. So this is just going to pull the playbooks and tasks um, out of heat. If you want to actually apply them, then you kind of have to know what command to use. So be Ansible playbook. Uh, inventory, um, then the playbook you want to apply, and this will probably fail because I'm not using the right SSH key. I would have to know which one to use. Um, but this kind of gives you a sense of, of how you would do the same steps manually. A um, bunch of stuff got skipped because I believe my inventory is probably not correct. But yeah, anyway, that's um, – oh, yeah, I've got a problem with the, the inventory. I should have uh, generated the, the YAML version of the inventory, not, not the uh, I and I one. Um, yeah, that's the problem. Anyway, though, that kind of gives you a sense of how to inter interact with this stuff manually. So this is useful. Uh, when you're doing a lot of development, um, if you kind of want to step through the steps manually as you go, um, this is quicker than having to go through the whole workflow, uh, which is going to apply everything in one shot. You can do the stack create, 
uh, and then pull the generated Ansible out with triple O config download and then take a look at what got generated and possibly try uh, just applying that one task for maybe whatever you're working on or applying it to a single node or something so that you can have a little bit faster development cycle. Um, Hey James. Yeah. hey James. Yeah, what's up? Can you explain um, a little bit of how this interacts with the UI or how the UI might use this? Yeah, I can. Um, so basically, we have a blueprint open for Rocky, which Yirka has volunteered to, to work on. <laughs> um, and so basically, what needs to happen in the UI is the same set of changes that. I had to do to triple a client to get this to work. Um, so you'll have to call an additional uh, workbook, kind of after the deploy plan workbook. And then that will also give the UI a Zakar queue that it can subscribe to and get kind of the live output from Ansible. Um, unfortunately, the deploy plan workbook uh, really wasn't abstracted enough to where I could make these changes to where uh, the client and UI wouldn't have to make any changes um, because there's, you know, there's specific things that our clients assume happen when you call the deploy plan. So one of those is you call the deploy plan, it returns almost immediately, um, and then as a client or a UI, you know to start go querying the status of heat. At that point, you're talking directly to the heat API. Um, once the heat stack is created, uh, there's an assumption that the whole overcloud is deployed, and you can go ahead and create the overcloud RC file, and then you're done. Um, in the config download case, obviously that's not going to work. Um, we don't we don't want to return immediately. Once the the heat stack is created, we would have to do the additional step of applying all of the Ansible. So the only way I could do that was to do it in a separate uh, workflow. So that does require changes to a triple O client and the UI. Um, I don't think it'll be too invasive. Um, it should be doable because it's just, it's just calling uh, an additional workbook kind of after, or sorry, workflow after uh, you call deploy plan. But, you know, all that to say, right now, this doesn't work with the UI. I think that's what you're asking. So. <laughs> um, but yeah, we plan to tackle that during Rocky. Thanks. All right, um, anybody have any other questions? I don't think I have too much more to show, really. Okay, well, I'll just briefly mention kind of where we hope to keep going with this stuff. So, yeah, I mean, one of the big things for Rocky is making this the default deployment mechanism, which means, of course, the UI support, um, getting the few remaining services that don't yet support being configured this way, getting those switched over. Um, so a couple of those are like Ceph Ansible um, and Octavia, and I think there's a few other ones as well. Um, getting that stuff switched over will allow us to make this the default deployment. Um, and there's also some ongoing discussions about uh, kind of refactoring some of our inline Ansible tasks that are in the heat templates kind of refactoring those to be more role-driven um, and kind of consuming from the roles in our heat templates. So if you've seen some of the work that Flavio has been doing around like APBs and creating roles for, for services and, and things like that, um, we don't want to like reproduce the same Ansible tasks like in the role and in the template. Um, so one of the things that would be cool is if we had a bunch of standalone roles for contribute for configuring all the different OpenStack services, and then we just reuse those in our heat templates itself with like an include role um, 
or something like that, as opposed to, to like inline tasks and things like that. Um, so that would be kind of cool. Um, so, you know, there's all that stuff is still kind of under discussion. There's not really a lot of patches proposed um, right now, but um, that's kind of the, the things that I would be expecting to see next. All right. Well, if there's nothing else, we'll wrap up. And uh, thanks for joining. Thanks, James. Thank you, James. It was great.